sometimes we get comments and emails that keto doesn't work. Yeah, so today we're gonna talk about five reasons why the keto lifestyle doesn't work to lose weight. What we've got here is failure to communicate. Hey, what's up family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, Two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics. And then every Monday, we sit down on a couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com. And that's where you're gonna find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to okay, it. Okay, so we're gonna start off with this. This video is gonna be just a little controversial. So don't throw bacon at us. <laughs> Actually, what we want you to do is hear us out. I don't go down to the comment section and start leaving nasty comments and negative you know, dislikes until you watch the entire video because today, we're gonna talk about five reasons why the keto lifestyle doesn't work when it comes to losing weight. Because we do get comments and emails from time to time from people who say keto diet doesn't work. Oh, we get just just a couple, right? In the comments and emails and Facebook, people say it all the time. Messages. And you know what? They're right if you do these five things. Yeah, they're all important and that's why they're not in any particular order. Yeah, because honestly, if you're doing just one of these, there's a good chance you're not gonna be successful. So are you ready to get started? Let's do it. Let's start off with number one. Number one is you're eating too many non-keto keto foods. That makes no sense. Well, it has to do with the labels. Yes, so here's the thing. And we're talking about a lot of different ways. First of all, when I got started on keto, there really weren't any keto products. And you definitely could not go to the grocery store and find anything labeled keto. The best you were gonna find in the grocery store would be something like a Quest bar, which was yeah. still kinda high in both total and net carbs. But there were no keto products. Now you go into the grocery store and you're gonna see all kinds of products that are labeled keto. But then when you look at the ingredients, they have ingredients like wheat and sugar and fibers which are telling you you can deduct them, but you really can't. And so now you've got something that's got like 30 total carbs and they're saying, but there's 29 grams of fiber, which they're using as a sweetener and that's gonna kick you out of ketosis. And they have all kinds of awards on there, I guess given by the manufacturer's mother or yeah. something. They say it's keto friendly, keto approved, keto seal, this magazine likes us, like I'm a good guy, you know, so just buy my product. But yeah, just because it says that on the label doesn't mean that that is what's the truth in the ingredients. And you really have to educate yourself as to all of the names of sugar. Yeah, so sugar has got just tons and tons of names. So you really need to learn them. And the bottom line is sugar is sugar is sugar and they put all different names. I mean, we just recently did a vlog where we've shown people like you get stevia in the raw, you're thinking stevia, keto product. Now, first of all, there is no such thing as a keto product. There's a keto friendly product. Well, stevia in the raw is not a keto friendly product because it's liquid stevia that is just then bound to dextrose, which is a? Sugar. Sugar. Maltodextrin is almost always gonna kick you out of ketosis. So you really need to learn the names of the sugar and you also need to learn the names of a lot of the other ingredients that just aren't very good for you when you're on a keto lifestyle, like wheat and some of the other products out there. Yeah. So that leads us to number two. And number two is hidden carbs. And they are out there like jaws circling your keto journey, just waiting to attack. So let's talk about what a hidden carb is because I know I didn't understand hidden carbs at the beginning. But Me neither. there are labeling guidelines when it comes to the Food and Drug Administration. And what that is is if a product has less than I think it's like three quarters of a carb, they can put that it has less than one. Yeah. If it's got less than a half of a carb, they can put that it's got zero carbs. For example, heavy whipping cream has 0.4 carbs per tablespoon. 
What does that mean? A lot of the heavy whipping creams, when you go buy them, it's gonna say zero, but it's not zero. If you have two tablespoons, you're having almost a full carb. You need to know these kind of things because if you go by that and then you just start going, well, I can have three ounces of heavy whipping cream. Well, you just consume two and a half carbs, but according to their label, it was zero. Yeah, I mean, they are going to use that math to their advantage because mm -hmm. it looks good on the label and it appeals to people who are looking for a total carb count. But you have to know how much are you actually going to use and put that amount in. Right. Because if you are only using, you know, one tablespoon of heavy whipping cream, fine. But I rarely just use that. And the same thing goes for cheeses. Pretty much every cheese out there, unless there is added sugar, is gonna be one carb per ounce, but some of the cheeses you're gonna buy, and I'm not even talking about shredded cheese, I'm talking about a block of cheese. Figure everything has a carb per ounce. So if it says zero, I recommend that you still count it as a full carb. Same thing when it comes to condiments, and I think condiments are the notorious place. Yes. Whether you're getting with spices or even something like a ketchup or something like that, when you look at spices, every single jar is going to say a serving size is a quarter of a teaspoon including garlic. Well, the problem is if a clove of garlic, that is a carb. So if you're somebody like me who used to like go get like pizza without the bread, Ooh. I would put like 20 cloves of garlic, the roasted cloves Vampires. on top of that. Guess what? I just ate 20 carbs, but everybody says garlic is a zero carb thing. So you have to really watch those hidden carbs. Yeah. Number three. Eating too many keto treats, and that's homemade or prepackaged. Yeah, so keto treats can definitely get the better of us. It's nice that we're living a lifestyle where there are alternatives to eating the Oreos and the cupcakes and things like that. And people say all the time, well, I think keto is too restrictive. I personally, having been on almost every single diet out there at some point in my life, think keto is the least restrictive diet that I have ever been on. And one of the reasons is, is there's alternatives. Like there's not many diets out there that say, hey, it's okay to eat ice cream. Hey, it's okay to eat a mug cake, but you can do that on keto, but not if you overdo it. No, and it's easy to do. And I like convenience foods too. I love these grab and go treats. And again, the manufacturers, a lot of these grab and go things are looking for us to do the math equation, which is total carbs minus fiber equals the net carbs. And as long as they think that they have, you know, substantiated a very low net carb count, you could eat three, four, five cupcakes in the day and feel like you are well under your 20 net carb protocol. But the reality is the total carbs are astronomical and you may not be able to actually subtract all the fiber that they're saying. Yeah, so one of the ways that you can get around eating too many treats, and we talk about this all the time, even if you wanna follow a net carb protocol, which by the way, Net carbs isn't really a thing. It was made up by the food industry to sell more Atkins products years right. ago. But again, back then you didn't have all of the fibers and everything that they're using now. So the best way to get over this and make sure that you're not consuming too many keto treats, either again, packaged or homemade, is even if you have a net carb like protocol, like you only wanna have 20 net carbs, put a total carb cap on yourself. It could be 30, it could be 40, it could be 50, especially if you're getting started now. So even if you make it like, hey, I'm not allowed to have more than 50 total carbs, what that's gonna do is it's gonna limit how many treats you can have because you're only gonna be able to fit so much stuff into that net carb without exceeding the total carbs. And that's gonna limit the amount that you eat. Absolutely, because now we're starting to see even bars and muffins that come onto the market that may have a very low you know, net carb count, but we're talking 27, 30 total carbs. Well, if you've got a total carb cap on yourself, then you will never eat more than one of those because it just isn't going to fit into your day. Yep. Now the thing that we're gonna have to worry about is number four. It's a great reason of why the keto diet doesn't work to lose weight for people. And that is overeating fat. 
So when we first get started on keto, we're eating fat in order for us to be satiated, to mm -hmm. get in between meals. Yep. And we don't worry about how much fat we consume as we are transferring ourselves from being run on carbohydrates to run on fat. But at some point, we don't need to top off as often as we did when we started. Yeah, so when you look at your macros, you have three macros you need to worry about when you're living a ketogenic lifestyle. You need to worry about carbohydrates. We wanna keep those as low as possible. You don't need to hit whatever your high-end macro is. If you're saying my total is 20 total or 20 net, you don't have to get all those carbs in. It's okay if you're under that. Then you have protein. Protein is the most important one. You need to hit your protein goal and you should be eating at least one gram of protein for every lean, a pound of lean muscle mass that you have on your body. So for me, it's about 150 to 170 grams of protein per day. For Rachel, it's 110 grams of protein per day. For your fat, you want to eat up to a one-to-one -one ratio with your protein. So if you have 110 grams of protein like Rachel, she can have up to 110 grams of fat, but she doesn't need to eat all of that fat. You're going to use the fat to get yourself to the next, to the next meal and also to make your food taste good. But just remember this. The more fat you eat, the more fat your body has to burn off before it can get to the actual body fat if you're trying to lose weight. Yeah, because if I've got that amount of fat to consume, I don't want it just coming from what I put in my mouth. I want some of that fat coming off of me. Yeah. Now, that doesn't mean don't eat any fat because your body does need fat. Otherwise, you can get some like protein poisoning and you also could become deficient in some vitamins and nutrients because some of those vitamins need fat to get absorbed into your body. But it just means that you don't need to eat everything. So if your fat macro is 110 grams of fat, you don't have to get it all. It's okay if at the end of the day, you've only gotten 80 grams of fat in. Yeah, when we first started, we were making sure we like slathered butter on everything, whether we wanted it or not. I can remember feeling like physically ill. Like I, please don't give me one more cup of coffee that's got a tablespoon or two of butter in it. But we thought we had to have a bunch of fat. Which leads us to number five. Grazing throughout the entire day. Yeah, when we first got started on keto, because we were always trying to hit that fat macro, we were eating constantly throughout the day. And that's not a good thing on keto. Now, you don't have to intermittent fast on no. keto to be successful, but you do need to try to limit the amount of times you eat. Why? Because Keto is about controlling your insulin. And every time you eat, not every time you eat carbs, every time you eat, whether it is a single peanut, a tablespoon of butter, or a 16 ounce steak, you are having some type of an insulin reaction. The amount of insulin is dependent on what type of food you have, but you are having an insulin reaction and you can't lose weight in the presence of insulin because insulin is a fat storing hormone. Now, sometimes we bring over that sad American diet previous way of eating, which is three meals a day and two snacks. And we try to just bring it over into keto and just change it to keto food, but it really does not work. You're going to be spiking your insulin every single time you do that. So if you can keep it to three times a day and maybe even two times a day that you're eating, eat until you're satiated and then move on. And that includes your beverages. Somebody like me who cannot drink black coffee, I just do not like the taste of black coffee. So I have to put something in my coffee, whether it be a tablespoon of the Kai2 Super Creamer or a little bit of almond milk or something, I am having an insulin reaction, even if it is a small one. So when you are going to do that, consider that a meal. So. What I've learned to do is when I'm gonna have my coffee or when I'm gonna have something that's got any type of calorie in it, I'm gonna make that a meal and maybe have it with something else. And the yeah. same thing with diet sodas or something like that. If I wanna have a diet soda, I have moved to having it with my meal because that diet soda could possibly be causing an insulin reaction because of the sweet taste from it. Exactly. So finally, we do have a bonus one. And this one is just as important as the other five. And that is electrolytes. If you're not staying on top of your electrolytes, 
you're not gonna be successful in the keto lifestyle. Electrolytes are not just for getting past the keto flu. Mm -hmm. You need them every single day, otherwise you're gonna feel yucky, you're gonna feel sluggish, and chances are you're gonna reach for something that you don't want to. Yeah, so there's a lot of times where you're going to eat something and you're not really hungry, you're desiring salt. Right. Or you're desiring water. So you have to make sure you're keeping your electrolytes up. You need about 4,000 milligrams of sodium a day, 4,000 milligrams of potassium a day, and about 300 milligrams of magnesium. And if you're deficient in those, not only is it gonna make you feel yucky, but it could also be causing some weight gain and even some fat storing issues. Yeah. So that is gonna be today's video. Now let us know down in the comment section if there's any other things that you think could possibly causing you to not be successful on the keto lifestyle. Now if you like seeing videos like this, we have a bunch of other videos that we're gonna link right down there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which we're gonna put right over here. Whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel, click the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time, bye. bye.